Would you say the same thing about Sonic the Hedgehog, though? I wonder if you can guess where this one's going to go, Scott. <laughs> I want to wager no, but we'll see. <laughs> um, but, yeesh. Video games and films. They really don't mix. Yeah, people keep trying. You can understand why, of course. Video games are now, and have been for a number of years, the biggest sector of the entertainment industry. But while they can beat cinema in immersion, in terms of storytelling and character, with only Mm -hmm. a handful of exceptions, video games are woefully immature and pale in comparison to even the most mediocre films. And yet here we have an adaptation of a video game series whose notable elements are speed, gold rings, and guy with a (laughs) moustache. What more do you need? Yes. It's not a lot to work from, and Sega themselves can't do well with it. While I've only dipped in and out of the Sonic franchise since the Mega Drive days, the games seem pretty much universally awful. Though I know they do have their fans, including amongst our listeners, but for me, awful. Mm -hmm. Uh, With the sub-Saturday morning cartoon plots particularly conspicuous by their direness. In the, for instance, in the last fortnight I've had the pleasure of sampling 2017 Sonic Forces and I'm still offended by how bad the story elements are. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog is about a thing that goes fast and you collect some rings. It does not need story. Hold right, jump occasionally. Yes. So, uh, it'll come as no surprise then that Paramount Sonic the Hedgehog is... one of the best video game films... Mm. Hmm. Okay, let's not get carried away. It's still not exactly good, but we're not so much grading on a curve here as on a square wave. Uh, (laughs) And that it manages to entertain a tall, raucous, straight into the rarefied air of non awful video game adaptation. (laughs) For the uninitiated, Sonic is an electric blue, sentient, bipedal space hedgehog whose, whose defining characteristic beyond being an electric blue sentient bipedal space hedgehog (laughs) is that he can run really really quickly this for some reason makes him a target and his guardian a space owl non-electric blue (laughs) dumps the infant hedgehog on earth via means of a magic gold ring to protect him from a band of warrior space echidnas various hues His home on Earth is a small town of Green Hills, Montana, in the United States, where he manages to raise himself and stay hidden. Here he fantasises about being part of the family of local Sheriff Tom Wachowski, James Marsden, and his veterinarian wife Maddie, Tika Sumter. Though this is complicated by the fact that Tom will soon be moving to join the San Francisco Police Department. A further complication is that a power surge inadvertently created by a depressed Sonic running at supersonic speeds knocks out the electricity to the whole Pacific Northwest, which raises the interest of the authorities and they send in super genius Dr. Robotnik, played by My Fists Are Itching, to investigate. (laughs) By this point, Tom and Sonic have become acquainted and when he doesn't acquiesce to Robotnik's demands, Tom is framed as a terrorist and goes on the run with Sonic, who fails to cause alarm anywhere, despite being, (laughs) as previously mentioned, an electric blue sentient bipedal space hedgehog. (laughs) During the rest of the Chase Come Buddy movie, Tom will learn just what he's leaving behind and Sonic will find a friend and yada 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 generic pish. (laughs) And, like I said, it's not awful. Really, it's not awful, and there are some funny moments. But Sonic the Hedgehog is one of those films most notable not for its content, but for a meta story about the film. In this case, the extremely negative reaction to the first trailer, which led to a three-month delay while the effects were hastily redone. While the tenor and volume of the backlash was, as such things sadly always are, far beyond the reasonable, the initial version of the main character was undeniably creepy nightmare fuel (laughs) and the final version of the nippy blue fella is much more fitting both to the source and to its presence in a family film this corrected look is accompanied by a voiceover by Parks and Recreation's Ben Schwartz who does an okay job while it would have been easy to go too far and make the character too much of an irritating smartass it feels like he played it a little too safe 
and I would have welcomed Sonic being a little sassier. James Mars is likeable enough, if a little bland, and I'd have been quite on board for more silly adventures between the two. Certainly, that would have left less screen time for my god, I want to claw my eyes out, somebody make him stop. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, I realise I've been using translations of the name by mistake. My bad. I'm referring, of course, to Jim Carrey. Who's it get? <laughs> the action is passable. Really, that can be said about quite a lot of the film. It's passable for the most part, and that immediately sets it above all but a few genre mates. But it is undermined by one of its signature scenes having already been done in X-Men Days of Future Past. It's an entirely reasonable thing to have included, given the main character's skill set, yeah. but it's notably been done before and better. <laughs> I'm really not the target market for this, but for something with such paper-thin foundations, it's surprisingly unterrible. <laughs> <laughs> Dabbing with faint praise out of ten. Yes. As a 40-year-old man, <laughs> let me now give you my opinion on Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> a movie for someone a quarter of my age. Um, it is fine. There, there we go. Um, I, I don't know what they expected from this. Um, I, when, when I saw the kind of read on Sonic, I actually had a bit more um, hope for it because it looked pretty... Good, I think, in terms of as well as you could put a Sonic the Hedgehog onto a film if that's something you must do. And uh, it's been long enough since I've seen Jim Carrey go full Jim Carrey that I thought having him do the full Jim Carrey in a film might be tolerable. No. And it wasn't. That was a foolish Uh, thought, Scott. (laughs) Yes. If there was maybe half of him uh, in it, then it might have worked a bit better. And if there was perhaps maybe 75% less of Sonic the Hedgehog's lines. Uh, I know his part of the point of his character is he keeps talking, but if he was going to keep talking, could he at least say something funny? <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that the script could have done with a couple of drafts to maybe polish up a bit more liners, give it a bit more attitude, if you like, a bit more sass, as you say. Because he, he talks a lot without saying anything, and it gets quite annoying. That aside, and the actual structure of it's perfectly adequate. Um not doing anything that's not been done or said a million times before, uh, but it works reasonably well. And yeah, you know, the, the kind of relationship, if you like, between him and James Marsden, that works well enough. And all the, the CG action stuff is done well enough. It's an acceptable kids' movie that probably won't make your adults claw their eyes out if they were forced to watch it. Um, I don't know if I'd ever want to watch this again or on repeat, if you're in one of those unfortunate situations where your kid tends to really like it and you need to watch it over and over again, I would go absolutely mental. But, as you say, in terms of comic book, uh, in terms of video game movies, uh, um, one of the best. Yes. Not a lot of praise there, but yes. yes it, it doesn't it, have a lot of competition, that's the problem. <laughs> yes, it's um, up there with um, Mortal Kombat, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yes, it's it's not awful, and that's as much as we could have hoped for. So, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> as far as iconic video game characters go, Sonic's come out a lot better than Mario did. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, there are really very few video game films that are any good at all. I guess, I mean, for all the problems it has with the ethnicity of the lead, I actually really like Prince of Persia. Yeah. Um, Though I haven't seen it since it came out, so whether yeah. that would stand up or not, I don't know. But at the time, I remember liking it a lot. I think you did as well, if I recall yes. correctly. Um, I didn't hate Max Payne. Uh, I didn't hate Mortal Kombat. And of course, <laughs> the best is Street Fighter. <laughs> yes, that's the one. Um, yeah, Mortal Kombat, I may have seen one of them, and I don't remember much about it <laughs> Max Payne I think my big problem with Max Payne was that I was more disappointed than anything else but it, it got some of the elements right um, yeah. as adaptations go of like trying to get, actually get the aesthetic it's probably one of the better ones <laughs> uh, the Tomb Raider film all of three of them are just meh yeah. at best well, the, the second Angelina Jolie one in particular was terrible but yeah so it, it's really not got a lot of competition but it's yeah it's it's a pretty passable family film you know it's it's going to entertain your 10 year olds I would imagine yeah. you know um, <laughs> and 
if you can just like not be in the room when Jim Carrey's on screen. If it, if they do seem to like it or put on repeat, <laughs> yes. then you might be okay. Otherwise, you may be in the um, the market for a new television soon. You'll put your foot <laughs> through it. Yes. Yes, but I think that's the big surprise, Scott, is that it's not terrible. Yes. <laughs> so, not the best way to, to approach a film, but sometimes a genre does it to itself. <laughs> but we'll take what we can get.